Hello quilting friends, today is going to be a super fun video where we discuss what do we do when we've got to make a big cut in a small space with small tools. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, well, well, welcome back everybody. My name is Rob Appel from So Well, presented to you all here from Stitch in Heaven. And today's another Learn to Quilt, Learn to Sew with Rob video. I know we've got a bunch of beginning quilters out there, newbie sewers, and I'm so blessed to know you're following along with the videos. If you're not subscribed already, please do so. It helps the channel grow, helps spread the message. And if you have friends out there that are learning to quilt, please share the um, the URL, the, the just to let everybody know about So Well with Rob Appel. It's super fun and it's gonna be great. So today we're gonna to work on what happens when we find instructions um, and we need to make a big cut. Let's, we're gonna to work towards that big, big example, but let's just start with a couple of the fairly easy examples and maybe the what not to do's when you're dealing with making cuts. And one of the uh, questions that often comes is, how many folds is safe to cut and be accurate <clears throat> when we're trying to get some nice strips. So a lot of times when we're in a situation where we are limited in our space or limited with our tools, maybe we have a small ruler and we just want to cut a regular strip of fabric, well, you know, uh, there's a lot of different ways to uh, <laughs> stitch that quilt, we'll call it. So we don't, we don't want to hurt any cats out there. So anyways, let's just start from the beginning with uh, the basics of cutting. I have another video out there that will help a lot and that's kind of what led to these questions, but let's just go over these as a review. So I've got a wonderful chunk. It happens to be my favorite color green. It happens to be Benetech Shadow Blush. If you know, I put out a fabric line recently. This is the base, the background, and that's why I have so much to work with. I love it. So the first thing I want to do is I've got this rough, this raw edge, and I probably won't use the iron, but I'm going to make sure it's warm today. And so uh, one of the first keys to making any size cut is the proper tools. So if you were in my quilt shop as a newbie purchasing your very first tools, the first thing I always tell you to do is buy a mat and a ruler that is large enough to max out your space and your budget, because these tools aren't cheap, but if they're cared for, you won't be replacing them very often. And if you look for some of the better products out there, um, of course, we love our Creative Grids, our Quilter Select, our Olfa products, um, our OmniGrid products, all of those are really reputable brands. So at any rate, if you're buying those, they're gonna last. Not leaving your mat in a warm space, in a warm car on your way back from a quilting class will make it last. Not ironing on top of it, not putting your wool mat on top of it will make it last. Um, rulers can be broken, they're plexiglass, they're, so just be careful of those kinds of things. So let's all try to treat ourselves to at least a 24 inch long ruler, because um, it does make these cuts, fabric is often folded, and it's going to be 44 inches, so that makes us uh, 22 inches. You can see my ruler extends past on both ends, okay? So what we we're first ready to talk about is I have this cut set up down here, and I'm going to actually slide it. Hopefully you can kind of see, but I've lined up my ruler exactly on the fold of the fabric. So I am now going to believe or just make the fold my first true line or my first square line so that I can cut a nice square edge. Now I am not left-handed, but I'm learning to cut more on my left side of my body. But what I want you to always do is cut comfortably with your blade on the inside. So here we go. I'm just cutting myself a really nice, clean, accurate starting cut. Now what I want to do just for the uh, example we're going to start with is just cut off a chunk here. So I'm just going to take myself off an eight and a half inch chunk. So this ruler is eight and a half by 24 and I really dig it. But a lot of you, um, maybe you think you're just going to maybe dabble in quilting. And, and so you start with a very short ruler. You have something that's more like this. It's a 12 inch ruler. This fabric's 44 inches long. So I'm going to have to fold it at least four times or three folds, four layers to be able to get a cut that I could cut a strip with this ruler. When we cut with our folds, we're gonna run into two challenges. So again, we're talking today about what do you do when you have a bigger strip than your tool or a bigger slice than your space. So the first thing you can do is you can fold your fabric. So if I fold this, now that I've got a really nice true cut, so that was the one I made, this is the next one I cut. So both of these are super square right now. 
I can lay that over and because the fabric was already folded out the fold, that made it 22, then it was now folded again, which makes it about 11. So once again, I have enough ruler to make this cut. This is something we want to be cautious of, folks. So this little fold in here, this fold down here, if we are not applying enough pressure down, if we are cutting on top of a padded surface, um, we can get some flex and that flex can cause these little divot shapes, little hourglass shapes in those cuts. And if you're trying to cut really small, accurate amounts, then that can be a problem. So too many folds, really more than about two folds is too many in most of our worlds, partially because of our hand strength. Even again, it's folded. I lined up this line. I want to make myself a little cut. So I'm going to line up again those edges where I can see everything along that fold, taking my ruler. And here's something I try to point out in every video, but I never start with my fabric on the very tip of my ruler because I don't want to be hitting down here with the blade. That will start to dull the blade very quickly. Cutting blades can be an expensive um, purchase if you're, if you're not shopping on our link. I've got a link for you there. Um, but at any rate, yeah, you don't want to be going through your blades unnecessarily quick if you don't need to. You can see I was able to make a nice little shave there. And when I went ahead and cut this, let's check. Okay, I'm not seeing any little divots, any little hourglasses. You might see just the little teeniest one right there, which still just goes to prove that even in a couple of folds, now look, I think there's a wrinkle right here too. So that little bit of the wrinkle into the fold, probably when I laid it over, that can cause some irregularity. So folding your fabric to make longer cuts or bigger cuts in your tools isn't always the recommended way, okay? Too many folds can be can, can kind of be a terrible one. Let's try this though. Let's say, um, again, now let's just take our strip this way, okay? So we've got 45 inches long and I need to make a cut um, let's say that's going to be roughly 20 inches. Let's see if we can just kind of make up these numbers on the fly. First of all, again, I'm going to need to square this edge over here because once I start this cut, it's going to be a nice clean edge. So the first thing I'm going to do, bring it over to my right hand. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make myself a nice cut by laying my ruler. Looking at that line, looking at that line, everything is perfectly parallel, super nice. So now I can cut here, so I have a very clean edge. Now, if I needed to make 20 inches, of course, I could find here on my cutting mat, there's all of these numbers. One of the things we should have probably talked about at the beginning of the video, but it's actually really imperative because we're not only talking about two smaller tools, but two smaller space because quilts grow. Let's clear off some of this space, right, folks? We don't need to have this tool here with us right now. So I can go ahead and move the sewing machine out of our way. Come back. And now we have a lot more space that we can work with here, okay? Now, I happen to have two mats joined together because of my distance. That join actually accounts for math. So you would have to be very careful if I was just measuring from this 12 all the way down to this 12 and assuming that's 24 inches. Well, the problem is, is there's another about half of an inch and the problem is the word about. So you can't really count for that. So again, using your ruler or your mats can have one problem, which is the length of the mat. The other problem is this folks, we'll come back to this big pile of fabric here in a few minutes, I promise. Now, if I want to make a cut with my true edge over here, and I've got to use my math, now what I really, really need to do is line up the edge of the fabric along the edge of the mat. The ed oh, it doesn't really line up here, though. The edge of the, oh, now it doesn't line up there, though. See what I'm after? It's a little bit more challenging because partially when we have our rulers down on our fabric, we can slightly manipulate to get a nice accurate cut. We look at that accurate cut when we're doing our quarter inch seam allowance as our edge, right? So we just want a nice straight, well joined edge. So a lot of us will cut from our mats, but you really want it to go square. So one of my tricks is if I'm using my mat is I don't use the lines for anything other than the numbers. Let me see if I can really make this make a little bit of sense. 
Okay, so let's come down here and I'm gonna just work backwards. I can happen to see that this is the number uh, 20. And so if I wanna make a 10 inch cut, um, this ruler here is 12 inches. So I could one, move this down to 10, but now my ruler's not long enough. Oh, well, if I move this down, oh, that's not gonna, okay. So once again, now what I'm trying to point out folks, I know I'm kind of jumping around, but it does make sense in my head. If I bring this right down to this line where it says 20, and I come right down here, and I find uh, my next line here at 10, and I follow this down, and as soon as I drop my ruler on top, in theory, the distance between that point and where I'm about ready to start my cut is 10 inches. Let's give it a try. Okay, so if we cut that down and now I rotate under my tool, let's make sure we can all see for verificational reasons. I lay it flat, I lay it flat, and the ruler says I came up a little bit short. So you may want to lay your fabrics over the lines a little bit because remember, if you have a thread on the inside of the line here and a thread on the inside of the line there, you're technically cutting a little short. And don't worry folks, fabric moves and manipulates. This is one of the reasons that I can be a kind of a sloppy quilter and still come out with some pretty accurate stuff because we do have a little bit of give in the, the weave of the fabric, but we're trying to learn how to be more accurate, more precise. So again, using the mat can be beneficial if you're just using the numbers, but folks, I have seen so many folks, I have seen so many people struggle with using the actual squareness of the mat and the rulers at the same time, and it just doesn't ever come out square. And then you're constantly sewing in these funky shapes that don't come out square or rectangular in your quilt. And then you start to lose points and things that can kind of disappointing. So first, let's go back. Don't overfold your fabric. No matter how far you have to cut, folding your fabric too many folds can be detrimental because of those hourglasses. Two, if you use the lines on your mat, you may actually want to just cut a hair long and account for it because a lot of times you're going to be positioning your, let's call this a border strip or something like that, into other fabric so you can do a little bit of manipulation. My way of measuring always has been, let's say I measure the side of the quilt for a border, I just make a lot of extra. I start on one edge, I sew down, I press everything really nice and accurate, let it cool down, and then I trim it off. I've been criticized for that method. My quilts seem to hang pretty nice, but accuracy-wise, it's not what we're trying to teach. So at any rate, it works, but if you wanted to know how to get a 72-inch cut in a 36-inch space, or if that kind of a fold, or an 80-inch cut, let's dive into that now, because there's a couple of other ways we can do this. And let's just use this for concept because I don't really want to keep burning up my fabric. This could be quilted with, right? So now again, let's say I've got a ruler that's too small and a space with a gap in my mat or whatnot. I'm trying to create complications, folks, that make it more challenging. So one of the other things I've learned to do in the past is you can take one ruler, and I really like this method. So I could take a ruler, and now this is a 24 inch ruler, so I don't want to do too much math. So I can lay it right here. So I've got my 20 inch. Okay, so I first secured this line at 20 inches. Now I'm going to kind of manipulate the fabric so the fabric works with underneath the edge. So now I've got a perfectly square piece of fabric under my ruler that is too short because I've backed it up or whatever. Let's say we needed a 28 inch cut. So I'm gonna show you multiple ways to really cut this fabric without it being a problem and coming out pretty dang accurate. Okay, so back here, 20 inches, we've come this far and I used the number 20 so it ended in a zero, so it was easy math. Now if I come over here, let's say I need to make a 28 inch cut. Well, that was uh, too far. This ruler, I can come down here eight inches. Once I start to cut it eight inches though, it's going to not be long enough, right? So I've got all these little choices. So what you can do is you can slide, sorry, I need 28. So I'm gonna take my eight inch mark right to here. I'm gonna drop this ruler down, okay? I'm hoping you can see where I'm working right here. And now watch this, folks. 
as I start to cut, even though my ruler isn't going to the edge of the fabric, if I don't move my cutter, I can now take this, rotate it up against my blade, which is holding it nice and secure. I am checking this bottom line along the markings on the ruler and then, or the top line along the top, right? It's still telling me it's square in any direction. And then I'm gonna continue that pressure and that cut all the way through. And if all went well, I made myself a, what were we looking for, a 28 inch cut, which could have been a 58 or a 78 inch cut, however big it needed to be. So now if I come down here, I lay this there, and I come down and look, folks, without the stretch or anything, I'm dead on 28. So one of my favorite tricks is to stack rulers because they are big and they are square and they move together and they're accurate. I don't take the time to purchase the tools that lock them together, although they do work very nicely, but I'm often using different combinations for big cuts. So with my original theory of a bigger tool in your space, remember you can make small cuts with big tools, but it's hard to make big cuts with small tools. That's what we've been talking about here today. So having actual rulers that lock together is more accurate than using something like a cloth tape where you would use your cloth tape. But remember, this is gonna flex, this is gonna stretch. I was using the lines on the ruler all the way through the cut to help create accuracy. Now, a lot of us are still sewing in the dining room, on the dining room table and having fun that way. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So let's just talk about another really simple way. Hey folks, it's even in a border, you're making a patchwork project. So let's say you needed 80 inch strip. That's gonna be a challenging cut for any of us, including myself. So let's just make four 20 inch cuts. Wait, hit the, hit the brakes. Don't forget, we have some quilters math in there. So if I had strips, let's just do, let's just do some quick pretend just because I want to do this. Okay, quickly, I'm going to pretend like these are my strips. We're going to make four cuts and they're going to all be longer than 20 because we're trying to build to 80. And I think you know where I'm going here, right? You're going to need two that are 20 and a half. And why 20 and a half? Because you have a quarter inch on both sides. Now the ones on the end, remember the instructions were calling for an 80 inch strip. I guess I'm talking too much, we're trying to get here. The instructions were calling for an 80 inch strip to be inserted into whatever. As again, we're making this up as we go today. So with that said, let's say I have two center pieces. Those are gonna need quarter inches on both sides. So now these are 20, <laughs> it's pretty short for 20, but these are 20 inches and a quarter and a quarter. So these are 20 and a half. The ones that would go on to the other ends would actually only need to be 20 and a quarter because the other end is gonna be stitched in. So we lose a quarter here and then we lose a quarter at the other end and a half right? If that makes sense. So if you're preparing your strips, even if you get them out of order, remember the ones on the ends will be a quarter inch less than however many you need in the middle. And of course I was doing easy math by taking 80 and dividing it into four to get 20 inch strips. So try to find a number that will, I mean, nobody wants to cut 37 and two, I almost said two eights. Boy, I am wacky today. That would be a quarter inch, folks. We love our two eights cuts. Um, but at any rate, you know what I'm trying to say. Let's, let's use our rulers to our advantage. Let's use our space to our advantage. Let's make sure we have proper tools for proper cutting techniques to ensure the accuracy. And one of the reasons why this is such a challenge is folks, when we get out to the borders on our quilting projects, this is where it really matters. So yes, it is important to square each block as you go. It's important to square the quilt top before you start to put on the inner or the outer borders. And if you need to do those outer borders, a lot of us will do mitered corners. So again, what I really do is I'll miter together the strips in the border and then I'll take my multiple ruler sets after everything's ironed and cut it down accurately so I can place it nicely within my quilt. We don't wanna to do too much stretching. We don't wanna do much 
pucker in, right? Because at a certain point, it will no longer quilt out. I hope that makes some sense for all of you today. Hey, I've loved making another one of the Learn to Quilt videos in the series. Please, in the comments below, let me know what else I may teach all of you. If you haven't seen some of the other ones we have on rotary cutter safety, some cutting safety, some how to get a quarter inch, some of those kinds of things. We've got a whole playlist set up for you here at Stitch in Heaven. Again, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate you being here. And until we see you again, thanks, folks, and stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.